and if you want to go really deep into it, you'll find you'll become a priestess or a priest. I learned from really amazing witches, um, and but I wasn't initiated, for say, in any um, school. Mm -hmm. It was more my channeling, my, my teachings. And it wasn't until I got to Egypt that I got initiated by the goddess herself in the temples. I um, was a professional dancer, okay. um, which was beautiful um, and probably one of my favorite careers I've done um, in sporting events, TV, commercials, okay, okay. Um, all around the world. Welcome to this new episode and today I am here with Trisha. How are you Trisha? I'm very good, very good. Very nice. So yeah. Trisha is a priestess. So first of all I'd like to ask you, what is your story in life? So I'm from Australia and um, my background is indigenous. My uh, mother, uh, grandmother, my lineage is Aboriginal on that side. So I've always been um, taught traditional indigenous um, culture or my culture. Um, my father of course is um, Celtic, English, um, white skin, um, but on my mother's side uh, we have a very strong, strong lineage and the Aboriginal culture is all about Mother Earth and um, spirit uh, connecting in um, with star people or star people, star beings. Mm -hmm. um, so I was, as a little child, I, I grew up around all my aunties, my grandmother um, talking, women's talk, always in circle. So I was, I was lucky and I, I would always hear about them talking about ancestors, the spirits. Um, and at a young age, I could see spirit. I could communicate with my ancestors. So it was normal for me to do this until I hit teenage years, which was really freaking weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, really? Um, so it was always, it was always um, built into me, the, the, the spirituality. It was very, very strong at a young age. Um, and also to strong Catholic. So um, okay. very, very strong Catholic, which I rebelled against and went towards witchcraft. Um, so I had my indigenous roots, but also went into witchcraft at a very young, probably 17, 18. And wow. that's when I became a priestess in the craft. And um, wow, that's fascinating already. Can, yeah. can you explain what is witchcraft? Witchcraft, witchcraft is a person who is able to um, understand um, all dimensions, I guess, because we know everything is energy. Mm -hmm. So not only are we talking here, but there's also, also energy going on. There's elements, being able to connect into the elements, being one with nature. Um, it is a very um, nature-based practice. So I really um, levitated towards that because it was also connected to my roots as um, Aboriginal as well, Indigenous, all that, that um, uh, yeah. And, and now, what I do now is I take people around the world on my tours to connect with other Indigenous people which I find very, very um, important at this moment to connect back to the land and connect back to the old ways and old traditions. Um, so I'm very passionate about that. 
and bringing that through. So Sounds fascinating. And when at 18 you found witchcraft, I mean, of course, you, you mentioned already you had this background with the, the Aboriginal uh, indigenous uh, sort of lineage on one mm. side, the Catholic on the other. But then there was a, a specific moment that you can remember where you actually had this aha. I said, OK, witchcraft is my is my gift. Tarot cards. I started playing with, I was really fascinated with the occult, with the occult and um, I would read for my friends at a very young, young age and get into all that and then it led to friends introducing different, not belief systems, but different things that they would do and I was fascinated and curious so it opened a path for me. Um, and it was actually a, um, my father, um, funny enough, bought me a book, a witchcraft book. Um, I had a terrible boyfriend at the time and it was um, how to turn your ex-boyfriend into a toad. <laughs> and, and it Did was, he work? Well, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. But uh, which, was, which was funny. So, um, and my dad, my dad is very, um, I think, atheist, you know, he's very... But he gave me that book and it opened up a new chapter. I mean, it was just shits and giggles, but it was, it opened me up to more diving deeper into witchcraft. And in witchcraft, if you go into, you go through different initiations. Mm -hmm. Initiations is first, know thyself. Next one is to be one with nature and really um, you'll go through a year practice of um, being one with the earth and really um, connecting into your earth and connecting in with the air, connecting in with the sun. And then the next one is connecting in with the gods or the deities, gods and goddesses. And if you want to go really deep into it, you'll find you'll become a priestess or a priest and you'll dedicate your service to that god or goddess. Okay. So and that was calling. It, it was, was calling really uh, calling me. And, and so from 18 you started with the tarots and then uh, uh, what other experiences did you do? I mean, did you follow any teachers uh, or did it I was a more self-taught? I, I had um, a beautiful teacher, Janet Farrow from Ireland, famous witch, which is very like, oh, not a guru, but just an amazing, powerful woman. She would just walk in the room and you could, whoa, you could feel her. Um, so I learned from really amazing witches. Um, and, but I wasn't initiated, for say, in any um, school. Mm -hmm. It was more my channeling, my, my teachings. And it wasn't until I got to Egypt that I got initiated by the goddess herself in the temples, having um, supernatural experiences in these temples and I knew that was my calling yeah many lifetimes in those temples as a priestess so hence what I do now is I take people on these tours initiate people in these temples and um, also doing here on Kupangang uh, initiating people into uh, witchcraft, uh, sex magic, Egyptian Tantra, um, powerful feminine work, masculine work, um, yeah. Okay, okay, so since 18 you moved into this direction, you kept on developing and uh, sort of doing more and more, mm. and uh, now you say you have uh, workshops and uh, retreats, so you take people on tours uh, to see mm -hmm. or to experience uh, sort of, uh, you know, these uh, different mystical traditions across the world. Mm. And um, how does it work? I mean, uh, practically, if I am uh, in one of your workshops, what do I expect or what can I expect from you? <laughs> very, very good. Well, with me, I love to take people on a journey. So it depends on what workshop I'm doing. So if I, for instance, Egyptian Tantra, um, Egyptian Tantra works on let's say, the super conscious of, of everything. So it's the conscious, it's, it's working on the subconscious, it's working on um, 
all dimensions. So people yeah. have these uh, sort of experiences of magic, as you call them, and then they sort of go home and is their life improved or they have like a new dimension they can connect with? Definitely. So what are the benefits? Definitely. So, so I, and I also teach online, my online courses, uh, priests and priestesses of Isis. And, um, and of course I take them through a, a full journey um, where and a lot of these people, a lot of my clientele, um, a lot of them are doctors and nurses. They come from very high corporate world, but they know that there's something else. There's something missing. They know there's something, you know. And I, my clientele is always they're they're searching for something. Yeah, they know there's something more to this world than just, you know, the matrix or the three D, whatever you want to call it. And so I take them on the journey to, to uh, really pull out those passions and their soul mission, their calling, their, you know, um, yeah, what they're here to do. And okay. I love that. Mm. And with all that, I, I bring in the magic. So I'll, and I always work with sacred sexuality because it's, you can't have spirituality without sexuality. You have to have both. Okay. Yeah. We can dive into that as well. <laughs> so it seems to me that, uh, of course, uh, uh, your path in life has been a little bit un unconventional, we can say, right? Mm. Because, of course, you identify yourself as a, a witch or as a priestess, and you started, you know, at 18, so quite young as well. Mm. Mm. I mean, how did you manage with... Uh, sort of, uh, you know, the feedback and the pushbacks from mainstream society, because it's not so easy to say, you know, most people, you know, are a hairdresser or a IT manager or, you know, some sort of chef, mm. whereas you're a priestess, mm. right? Well, funny enough, I, I did try hairdressing, okay. <laughs> but that didn't last. <laughs> okay. It was pretty cool, but, um, but yeah, no, it didn't last. But I um, was a professional dancer. Okay. Um, which was beautiful um, and probably one of my favorite careers I've done um, in sporting events, TV, commercials, okay, okay. Um, all around the world. Um, but it was funny, every time I would dance on stage, I'd be channeling um, a goddess for the night or the day or, and going into a trance. And, and um, now I teach temple dance. So it's um, everything I've ever done, it's all led up to now. I think everybody, we do things for a reason, yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, for sure, so, for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, uh, as a dancer, that is uh, an artistic uh, uh, pursuit in life and uh, much more accepted also by mainstream society. Definitely, so definitely. You can have an artist, yeah. a artist uh, dancer persona and then on the back of it also, you know, do rituals and things. Yeah. And then maybe gradually, as you mature, you become more empowered, mm. then you can just become a full-time priestess. Yeah. Is that, is that what happened? Or? <laughs> pretty much, pretty much, yeah. And th they got to a stage where you can't hide who you are anymore, yeah? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very different to mainstream. So I was very, you know, never really fit in anywhere. Copan Gang, I f totally fit in. <laughs> I think we all do. Um, because we are all different here. Yeah, and I think there's a, a level of acceptance For sure. and love um, that we don't get out there. And um, mm -hmm. that's what I love about Copan Gang. Very nice, yeah. <laughs> very nice. And uh, of course, uh, you know, one of the things you mentioned is Tantra. And uh, I know that recently you've been part also of a sort of a documentary on, on the neo tantra practices in Kompangan. Mm -hmm. A little controversial, but <laughs> so you, you see yourself also as a Tantra teacher or you said that you use the sacred sexuality as part of your rituals and what you do, because you say, you know, that sexuality and spirituality are actually very connected. It is definitely so connected. So what can you tell me about the Tantra uh, or the Tantric aspect of what you do? So it's funny because I don't, I don't like to label myself, but I guess you have to, don't you, to tell people exactly what you do. Um, but yes, I do Egyptian Tantra. And so when I am teaching my practice, it is um, 
bringing spirituality with sacred sexuality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as um, when we dive into spirituality, we know the most potent energy is our life force, mm -hmm. our sexual energy. So being able to um, use that and know what to do with that energy um, and bringing it up to higher consciousness or higher parts of yourself um, can, can transform, can change your life. Mm. Yeah. And, and it, um, Egyptian Tantra or witchcraft, in, in, in the craft, we do that anyway. If we're doing ceremony where we um, protect our circle and then, um, then we're calling in the elements, which is um, opening up the channels of the chakras. Then we are um, then calling in the high, the the deities, the gods and goddesses in ceremony. It's it's the same same sort of practice in a, in tantric in a way, or where we're um, we're bringing these energies up to higher higher parts of ourselves. If that makes sense. Yeah, so yeah. it's yeah. So, um, and it is sexual energy. Yeah. It's not um, sexual energy that we would think of in mainstream, where we think main, mainstream would think of porn mm. or, you know, hardcore things. It's, it's, it's you know, um, it's the subtlety. It's yeah, subtle energy. Uh, right? The subtle sexual energy that I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. And if you can connect with that, it's healing, it's creative, uh, it's, it's life improving, right? Yeah, yeah, well, um, and you would have heard this all the time, we, we create babies from sex. We create these gorgeous, beautiful human beings from sex. I mean, that's the purity in that. That's what we're working with, the creative energy, yeah. Mm, the purity, the purity. Sounds, so, sounds very good, sounds very yeah. good. And uh, tell yeah. us, I mean, I think recently you were in Egypt, right? Yes. So you said that you fell in love with uh, the Egyptian tradition of Tantra, particularly, and uh, sort of the pyramids, I suppose, mm -hmm. and the deities and all the sort of the rich uh, tradition of Egypt. Yeah. Um, I mean, what do you do when you take people there? I mean, how does it work if I want to come on a tour to Egypt with you? Mm -hmm. I mean, what do I expect? <laughs> wow, what do you expect? Um, just to see Egypt through the eyes of the ancient ones, just to see Egypt in the way it was, or the golden era, and to feel it. And um, I have Egyptian sheiks, Egyptian shamans as guest speakers on my tour. We, it's jammed packed. And um, yeah, we do ritual and ceremony, and I teach, we teach, my, my ground team, we also teach, um, what was done and what, um, how these temples, what they were used for. And um, you have profound experiences. It's not like a typical tourist um, tour where you just take photos. We, you, you get to take photos, of course, but you're, you're not there to just, you're there to, um, to um, change, transform. And I, I love watching people on my tour at the end, how they change, they transform, and by the time they go home, they're just um, people from my tours. They've written books, they've become teachers, healers, everything. Um, yeah. So there's lots of satisfaction, of course, in uh, helping people on their path as well. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. You also mentioned that during the ritual, some people might get into some sort of trance state, or you get into trance state. What is a trance, actually? Just an altered state of consciousness where you can maybe perceive uh, something which is not just your body and mind, is that right? Or how would you define trance, how you get people into trance? A trance, okay, so, so let's break that down. So when I go into a trance, yeah, it's an, an altered state of consciousness, that's a good way of putting it, it really is. And you're opening up um, your channels or opening up that consciousness and being able to tap in. Um, you gotta always be careful what you're tapping into too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why you always gotta know thyself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a trance, a trance light state is an altered state of consciousness. And um, 
and with that, yeah, channeling, um, channeling the divine. Mm -hmm. And you say you have to be careful what who you call inside you basically, and you say notice self. Not so easy to notice self. Uh, I mean, that's probably the you know the the, the most difficult thing to do. Right? That's the practice. So the practice. That's a helps. daily practice. And uh, your daily practice is it like more meditative, or is it like a yoga-like, or ritualistic? I'm practice? so lazy. <laughs> I wish I could do yoga, but I am a bit lazy. Um, no, but I definitely dance. dance. I definitely love to dance. And um, so my daily practice would be prayer work, meditation, um, clearing my channels, making sure that my channels. I say channels is um, because my everyday life, my day-to-day -day living is I'm reading for people, I'm channeling, I'm, I'm a medium, I, I read for people. Mm -hmm. So I need to keep this channel clear, yeah? So I can call in, if that makes sense. Sure, yep. sure, sure. Beautiful, yeah. So, um, so daily practice is, um, is prayer work, is, is a lot of prayer work to the deities, giving honor, giving gratitude, giving thanks. Um, thank you for Mama Kopangang. Thank you for um, yeah, food and food? Uh, life in general. Yeah, uh, the being people. grateful. Yeah? yeah, yeah. This is very, very good indeed. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that's very interesting. Uh, we already mentioned Kopangan a couple of times, mm. but you know, usually I like to end the interview asking you why do you like Kopangan so much? You mentioned that you, you fit in into the sort of the, the community uh, much mm. more naturally than mainstream society. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. you know, wh why you keep on coming back to Kopangan, and what are your plans for you know this year or maybe next? Mm. Well, I'm based here. I'm based on Kobangang. So in two weeks, I've got another tour in Egypt. So I'm always back and forth, <laughs> back and forth. Um, but my, so this is my base and I do my retreats here. So I do online courses, but I also um, call in people around the world to come and do my retreats here and workshops and, um, Eventually, we'll build a temple. Okay, so that's the longer term plan. Yeah. Like, um, what style of temple would be like a witchcraft temple? It'll Egyptian style? Of course, it'll be Egyptian. You'll have to be Egyptian, <laughs> right? <laughs> With a twist of Thai, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's, I want a school. And I've already got um, a school in the pipelines already. Um, but I'm based here and I. I'm happy to um, to stay here. Very mm. nice. Mm. Well, well, sounds great. You know, I'm glad that uh, I had the opportunity to meet you. You're certainly a very interesting person. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, thank you very much thank for your you. time. Thank you. Blessings. Kap -kap. Kap -kap. <laughs>